sensor coming off of this sensor and that is a winding underneath the stainless steel sheets that's a platinum winding. And the circuit heats that. And what happens is the other sensor right here is measuring the gas temperature. So as you'll see, these are RTDs, resistance temperature detectors. They essentially are so stable, they don't drift. The NIST uses platinum for their resistance standards, so they don't drift. So one of the, one of the RTDs is self-heated, and that's your flow sensor. That's the longer one. And I can actually um, hand out some sensors if you haven't seen it. And the other RTD is your reference sensor. So let me just take a moment, pass this around. And I'm going to hand out, I'm going to pass this around. This is the sensor. And this is the circuit that drives the sensor. Excuse me, I'm just going to hand this over to the side. And this is the board that the circuitry is on. And with, that's called the SAB. And that has the heart of our technology. That's the magic. So, what we're doing with that circuit that I'm passing around is we're maintaining a constant temperature between the heated sensor and the reference sensor. So that's what happens when it shifts. The heated sensor is a small temperature above the reference sensor. And when molecules start flowing in a pipe or in a duct, if your probe's in there, the heated sensor cools down. And within one second, that cooling, due to the energy carried away, it gets heated up by the circuit. The sensor is being cooled by the energy carried away from the molecules, and that energy needs to be replaced. So within one second, the circuit is in balance. It knows something's wrong. It pumps more current out and replenishes the energy and heats that sensor back up. The flow gets higher, cools it down again, heats it up further. Cools it down again, I'm sorry, it doesn't heat it up further, and heats it back up. Meanwhile, the output of the meter is the energy required to heat this up. It's in milliwatts. So the, hot, the more flow rate, the more heat carried away, the higher the milliwatt output of the meter. Everybody get that? Now, in a perfect world, one sensor would be enough. But the temperature of the gas is changing also. So how does it know the temperature is changing? That's the other sensor. That's your reference sensor. So let's take a very simple example, an example where there's constant mass flow controlled by some controller upstream of 1,000 pounds an hour. Somebody has put in some system that always guarantees 1,000 pounds an hour. But throughout the day, that 1,000 pounds an hour, which is kept at 1,000 pounds an hour, that air, let's call it air, is getting warmer and warmer and warmer. Still 1,000 pounds an hour, but the other sensor drives it up, and if it gets cooler during the day or at night, it drives it down. There will not be a change in the output. You don't know anything but that it's 1,000 pounds an hour. The circuit's taking care of its job to correct for temperature changes at constant mass flow. OK? So we have a reference sensor correcting for temperature changes, and we have a heated sensor measuring the flow rate. What kind of a double are you trying to maintain? Uh, it depends. It's hot. Well, the other one is nothing more than a thermometer, Paul. It's just measuring the temperature of the gas. The reference sensor is just measuring the temperature of the gas and telling the other sensor to drive up or down. Now, there is, what was your question? Oh, it's about 20 degrees, roughly. It could be less, it could be more, and I'll tell you why. When it ships, it depends on your application as to whether it's a low delta T or a high delta T. I'll talk about that in just a moment. 
So the current required to maintain that overheat is your mass flow signal. If we were to work the math, which I'm not going to do, the milliwatts that you see coming out, which is a signal available on all meters, which by the way we linearize so that you have a nice linear display in SCFM or pounds an hour or a 4 to 20 that's linear, that raw signal represents the mass flow signal. Okay, I told you we use platinum for the windings, but I'm going to ask the question anyway. 